can bring the animal down. You have to set up first, though. You have to contact them. Um, I have a flyer, which I can um, give over to you guys. But um, it's free, and it's going to give free spay or neutering surgery, free rabies, and FVRCP vaccine, free nail trim, and free Brevecto application, uh, three month flea and tick preventative. Wow. Um, wow. They reached out to us, we were more than happy to do it, and I've already spoken to the other members of the board, and as long as it goes well, we will keep doing it. That's for so, cats. Yeah, that's, 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 that's for cats, though. That's, that's not for trap cats. cats. Well, who knows if it's a trap cat or your pet? I'm sure it's a trap cat. You're going to figure it out. Oh, it's just your special carrier. Yes, it's the open air carrier. They get scared when they're closed. Yeah, exactly. You might want to listen to this. Yeah, really. This is Felicia from Forgotten Cats. So we we are up to two thousand cats a month sterilizing, and I turn people away all the time. Okay, this is a huge problem, and CNR is not really just to be honest with you. We have got to get the municipalities yeah. in place yeah. to do, stop people from dumping their animals. Yeah. Yeah. One thing is very important, any landlord should make sure that all the animals are sterilized before they spread. That, 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 would, that would make a huge difference. And my purchase. So that they can be trapped yes. by the person's name and they have to show that they registered that microchip and sterilized that cat. If you want to rent and be a transient within that within that county, within that township, you need to be held responsible to fix your cat when you come in and leave. Yeah. Yes. Because when you leave that one cat behind, it becomes seven for me to track. And it, it does not stay one. If it's fixed, one stays one. And it, uh, then I'm just trying to find a friendly cat, a place to land. So, yeah. so, so the other thing is, as a county here to this, um, I, I can know. I think that that's really what we have to do. We have to keep proactive with this area. Okay. Yeah. And there's multiple ways we can do that. That's one of them. That, that would knock a lot out right there. Yeah. The other thing is make it mandatory that no one's allowed to adopt out an unsterilized cat. Yeah. Right. Okay. I don't know if that's the law here. It's the law in Delaware. I don't think it is. No. So part of the TNR, which which I'm sure everyone here that can relate to, is the byproduct of TNR. Okay. What do you do with the friendly cat? What do you do with the too small to sterilize? Mm. Well. Forgotten Cats is over here, almost 700 cats are sitting here on our network right now waiting for adoption. And our adoptions, I don't know about anyone else, but our adoptions, we're at 600 pet stores, and our adoptions are so slow right now. And I can tell you why, because we have these organizations going down to South Carolina, we're all over, bringing thousands of animals up here, and on, over a weekend, adopting out 1,000 animals. That's crazy. Because yeah. yeah. uh, you don't know where they go. All those big companies are paying mm -hmm. Providence, Brandywine Valley, SPCA to go get those animals. They're not doing it out of goodwill. Oh. They're paying them I to do that. I just texted about that. That's Pet terrible. Companies and they said Valley, $1.5 million dollars to go down and pick up so that they're obligated to take so many animals and bring them in here. And the problem is, is that they're handing them out right. to anybody. Right. Well, how do you knock out a thousand animals on Saturday? <laughs> you're not they're checking not anything. You're just Denver's giving them to closed. anybody. All the apartment complexes. So they're going to anybody. These wow. people pay $20 yeah, to take it home, up here keep the right. play with it for a while, and out the door. And who's being called? As we All the are. Are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. We have to put an end to that. I don't know how you do that. But, and the other thing is, who's an open intake in, in Delaware County right now? Nobody. Nobody. I, I've got probably 900, mm -hmm. but I've called all these other organizations yeah. and they won't take we them. We have to. But they will take them from all these other states because they're yeah. getting That's a great point. A couple hundred dollars each. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we need to make all the donors in these areas know that what these other organizations are doing. Mm -hmm. Because that's not, their money's not going to local animals. Their money's going to wherever they pick them up. I don't know where they go. Do you guys hear that back there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that really is a problem. Yeah. 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 We need yeah. to keep it more full because they're bringing pets up from the, they're bringing yeah. animals up from yeah. the yeah. south. I yeah. Yeah. Right. And I actually and they're paid paid and I didn't even and know they're why they're being paid to do it. Yeah, and so no one will take the animals because they've got all these other animals that they're getting paid to do. Yeah. But, they won't, <laughs> but they won't take any of the sprays we find here. <laughs> all these other little groups here, so everybody that's got these kittens and these cats and, 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 and then dumping them on the community, it just saturates the market. We can't even find that. <laughs> so if, if, you know, so that would make it a lot easier on yeah. the smaller groups. Right. All you have to do is P&R, and that's deal with the kittens and the cats and all right. that. Right, right. right. Think about yeah. that. How much more could you do if you didn't have to worry about women who lose their mama and their kids? Well, and I want to know, why can't Delaware County have a shelter? Yeah. I mean, because Delaware County does. Well, it is possible. Like, we weren't actually thinking along those lines at first, but then when we got the email from... Christine, at the county council member, mm -hmm. and she mentioned about providing space, mm -hmm. like a building. So it is possible. Um, you know, I don't. We don't know all the ins and outs of that. But um, so that would be like somebody would have to take over, okay. take that over. But like Donna did say, you know, which is a good point. She told me. She said, like, what you don't want to happen is for everybody to just take all these animals there and then you're stuck and then you have all these animals that you can't right. stop there so, so we don't want to do that <laughs> so there has to be something i don't know what the answer is for that yeah i mean if we, everybody knows um that um you know providence used to be the delaware county yeah it's bca yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they were losing money it cost an exorbitant amount to Run a
for new people that are families that are adopting just to get that you know going because there's a lot of people that are you know I can't afford a vet bill so another thing that I've noticed is that um, um, the process for um, adopting I don't know if it has relaxed a little bit but a very good friend of ours years ago had a cat for years the cat died he wanted to adopt and he told us that he got turned down and we couldn't believe it like it was like what so that might be something that the rescues and you know and everybody who does adoption we might have to maybe make it a little bit less um you know it's, it's easier to buy a house yep. than it is to adopt because there's know, certain right I mean, <laughs> you go to a shelter, mm -hmm. but all you pretty much have to do is sign your name. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not that. Yeah, we can't do that. So, I mean, the rescues, like, I'm fine with the stricter requirements because if I foster this pet, mm -hmm. I need to know that it's going somewhere where it's going to be cared for. Right. Well, absolutely. And I'm not saying that. But maybe there's some ways, because for our friend, our friend not to be approved this guy is a professional and he he took great care of his cat the cat was I don't know how many like 16 17 years old is in you know like he loved this cat and he was devastated like that he couldn't there are things that, the cat. there are things though that there's a lot of unknowns in your story yeah. well we don't he's known Dave since they we don't want the cat you know, to we don't want them outside oh he wouldn't do that so no so so it's not harder to get a house than it is to get a cat. Well, I'm just saying, but there are certain restrictions that when, and there's other people that have told me they couldn't, they couldn't get an animal either. So, so uh, I just think that there, there might be some things that we can look at well, that we might well, be then, able to not. We need to be talking to Brady One Valley SPD and hand them out to you. And, um, well, that's true. Yeah. So, no, that's so not a good, I'm not saying that. There's a protocol that good rescues have. Yeah. And that is checking vet references. In other words, if your cat, if you can't afford a vet for your cat, you're not getting a cat. Okay, well, that's where we would come in and we would say, well, you it, say you get an application and you call and say hey listen this person can't afford vet services but everything but else looks good but they shouldn't do that then we can provide pet insurance for them you're going to pay monthly yeah yeah like we could that could be part of getting people to adopt if you have to do it you have to do it and every so often you look into like how are the finances now maybe they can afford it now they got a raise like things like that but you know everybody is so stuck yeah. it's going to affect them and that's all yeah. i think if you all if, if they meet the requirements to get the pet and then down the line they have financial issues and they can't afford a surgery or some kind of treatment then you have some kind of assistance program because i think yeah and we could do like that, that too help, like yeah. that of Let's yeah, say it's in this fund or something, or is that just the euthanized? I don't there's, I know there's a fund. Program. Yeah, that was another thing too. But to get to get unstuck, you know. But then you would have to pay for that cat for, for twenty years. For twenty, years. For 20 years. Years. No, no, no. We would look at every so often, every six months or whatever. Mm -hmm. Look at see are they are they making more money? Do they have a better job? <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> Just because somebody doesn't take their cat to the vet doesn't mean they can't afford it. Well, we would look, well, we would look, that look at that at first. first. We would look at that. Like, and those are the people yeah. that get declined. Right. Okay. You know, yeah. and if we if we if we get tons of applications, and if you get an application and they say, well, you know, we call the vet and they say, well, we haven't seen that cat in three years. Right. Why would why would they get another cat? Well, there are people that like like. I like, I'm a holistic person. I like, there's a holistic vet in New Jersey. He was on um, today's show. He is unbelievable, this guy. I wish he was cloned and he could be here. Um, but he's two hours away, so it's just not feasible. But holistic, holistic, there's, there's a veterinarian here. I would encourage you to look into holistic veterinary. You can get certified. Dr. Bukoff is his name. 
he was a regular vet and he, his story was that he saw that he couldn't do anything more for his, his patients. <laughs> and he then started thinking, is there nothing else out there? Like, this is crazy. So he started looking into holistic um, certifications and he got certification. His, he's been in, in practice for, I don't know, he's, I don't know, I don't think he retired and I hope he didn't, but um, he's been around for a long time. And he said, he told me, he said, the way that he does his practice now, these animals are so much healthier. And he actually has his own pet food that he makes. I know a lot of you aren't gonna like it, but we feed our pets raw cat food. Um, and that's what he, he made, created his own raw cat food and dog food. And he just said, he said, it's, it, my practice is so much better. But you have a vet reference because you right. have a vet. <laughs> 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 How long have Hi, my name is Stacy. I am um, I run the Chester City Health mm -hmm. Incident Resource Manager um, on Facebook. I also run Chester City Pet Care Program. Have been partnering with Providence Animal Center for the last year or and some change to uh, bring the Fido Van, the Spay Neuter Clinics, and the Vaccine Clinics uh, to the city of Chester and the surrounding area, which is, um, if Sharon, you know the exact number of what the percentage was for the cats that we had out of what was Chester versus Delco. I forget if you told me. Oh, yeah. Right, so we did 1,068 cats last year, and 765 of those came from Chester. Mm -hmm. Correct. In one, year. Year. In one township, 765. Wow. And that was just Tracy and I. And I think a lot of dogs here in the too, right? Yes, they are. They have a lot of dogs. dogs. Yes. Are they right. So oh, that's, exactly that, that is a huge issue that we have uh, in the city right now. Um, myself, Crystal, um, a few other select people that are not here um, dog-wise, we have been effectively playing animal control wow. in the city of Chester for a job that I was hired for for an animal control officer for them to turn around and say, well, we don't have a straight hold facility, so we're just giving you a job offer. Um, wow. But we still care about the animals, so that is you know, what we do. Anyway, aside from that, um, just to um, make a note on the free spay and neuter clinic for the house cat, the link is currently not working with that QR code, so if anybody's getting, um, uh, yeah, no, right? <laughs> Um, there are probably eight different Phytovan clinics that are listed right now, as well as a vaccine clinic as well in Eddystone in December. Um, but the QR code is not working. I did put a message out to the scheduler at Providence that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. So just hold your horses on that. We're gonna try and get it up and fix that by tomorrow. Um, but one thing that I have noticed and uh, thought about and worked on and everything else just in the time that I've been sitting here, I've had three people message me to my page and ask if they can surrender their animals. Mm -hmm. Three. Um, one from Montgomery County and from Chester. One dog, two cats, and another dog that we have been working on earlier. Um, but anyway, my big thing is when it comes down to whatever this ends up being, education is going to be the Absolutely, number one. Here. Anything. <laughs> education is going to be yes. the number one. People need to understand what goes, what actually goes into owning a pet. If they're going to yeah. adopt, they need to take a course. This is where we're at with it. Yeah. If they're going to they have a Chester City streets and bring them in so that they can be, you know, dignified, you know, cremation. Um, but education is definitely going to be number one out of anything of this. Yes. Pet owners, there's a lot of people that are adopting pets out here that don't know what it is mm -hmm. and what it actually entails to own a pet. And that is going to be more important than any type of adoption fee, any type of vetting, any type of anything. 
because you can have the most money in the world, but if you're a crappy pet owner, that pet's still gonna end up out the street or back in the shelter. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I was thinking of school assembly. Yeah, I would love to kids. Do that Yes, that was one of the ideas I have too, because starting them young, and that's another thing, because a lot of kids, we had, we pulled up one time. I mean, there are kids throwing a football at a stray cat that one of the ones that we feed. And we're like, you know, trying to tell these kids in, a, in as nice a way as possible, you know, please don't do that because you're gonna hurt that cat and, you know, but they're not, they're not understanding because their parents <laughs> probably don't understand. So I think if we start young and help them. I think we have to face the fact, yeah, I'm just gonna give you two seconds. I think we have to face the fact that a lot of the people that we're talking about are trying to put food on the table, are trying to uh, pay the rent, are trying to pick up, make arrangements to pick up their kid at school. I mean, let's, let's, I mean, there are, I like to think that there are good people in this world. Some, there's a lot of yes. bad people, a lot of bad people, but, you know, let's factor that in that, that this is the reality of the area we live in and the times we live in. They don't have the money. Right. And like uh, I think An uh, uh, Angela said before, if you're going to pay for a cat, you're paying for a for life for them. You know, it's, it's, and I also think I also think that all of this talk is wonderful. It's wonderful. It's great to plan, but we need to stop the reproducing now. Yes. Let's do more to stop the reproducing, and it's got to start with the township. Yes. They have to adopt a TNR ordinance yes. so that they don't yes. get that. Yes. 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 I, I know you want. I know you want to. Speak. I just want to say something real quick, if I can. So I know you guys. So Lisa and Rich, they reached out to me a couple months ago uh, to try to help them to do something. Uh, I reached out to Steiner to try to get. I know Steiner is again. You already mentioned him about what he who he fosters and things like that. And I know you wanted to see what can be done, right? And this is that first part. You're holding this meeting, and you see the interest of everybody that's here. But the the best way to get started is you, we're gonna have to come up with a, a 501c, you're gonna have to create a group because this conversation is great, but it's not gonna go anywhere unless you have a group that's gonna do it. You'll be able to get more grants, you'll be able to get more funding, and the boroughs will take you serious if we have that. So I think by what Rich and you know, uh, Lisa C is, you guys are out here. And I think it's a matter of getting that commitment to do that. And then you can talk about these different the different stories and a different way it goes. So I think that's the biggest thing. So I'm going to ask everybody here if, if, if they created a, the 501C, how many people here? Can anybody who has it who is part of a 501C already just like stand up? Oh, good. Okay. So, so can we create another one? Well, again, I didn't know that. So, okay. so the key here is that to put that group together and create one well, together. Well, townships that have a TNR ordinance in place that does not harass the residents for feeding the starving cats, will you please raise your hand? Oh, there's none. Yeah. Well, from feeding my cats. I, I can, I can harass. Yes. 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 My neighbors do not bother me. They have threatened to put my neighbor in jail. Long term plan. It is. Long term support. Long term funding. 501c3 organization. Meetings. Great. Great. Have them. But now. Adopt a TNR ordinance and help the residents get the cats off or get them not to put them on the street and help the trappers and the rescues to get them off the street. So, so, so if I can, with, with that being said, then, I know you guys have the different groups, but again, that's something to get started. I will go ahead and look around for any other ordinances. If you, so the five one C's probably know where we have these ordinances placed, right? The, right. Does anybody I have this? So get me the information, all right, and I will put it out. I will put it out there. Uh, again, for me, that's why I came. You know, that's why I can only do Collingdale, right? And then you can start it from there. But again, 
you have all, if you got eight 501Cs here, that's, that's still not one group. You need one group to, to go out for everybody. And, and again, the, the boroughs will take more serious effect to this when they have that. So that's... Edward Darby's looking to hire cops, but they're out there. Have another meeting in place. Legislators, the people that are going to make those decisions, we need to influence them. Right, because the hour and a half you have here tonight is just basic enough to get you started and see the interest. To get everybody here to say, hey, we're on board, let's move forward, and then you have that extra meeting, then you start that process, like you said. January is that goal, but I can start working on something before that. However, unfortunately, ordinances take up to two to three months to process. They have to go out. They have to go out in the paper. They have to do that. So I will do my part to assist what you guys can do. I just need you guys to be there to support it as well. So I'll post it out to Lisa, and then she can get it out to this email group that she'll create, and then we go from there. So I just need anybody that, if you live in Collingdale or you know people who live in Collingdale and you don't, tell them to come to those meetings when we bring it up. I will make sure it gets brought up and we'll go from there. So that's the best I can do. Um, I my thoughts would maybe be like a sliding scale or like a sponsor might be better um, because 
when I got our cat, um, they convinced us to get insurance for him, and then our claim for, he ended up having a heart murmur, and um, it got denied because it was like a pre-existing condition. So yeah, the insurance is oh it, It's oh, really it's not that as helpful as it seems. Anybody having peanuts? doesn't cover anything. Yeah. You can't keep up with everything. And if you only really want, what do you do? Mm. Mm. Going, it's going to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
has the, the same spiel for all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And we yeah. have the same thing. Yeah. 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 Ye
have to speak with one I, I assume I live in Britain. I assume they probably have a team. So, I guess we'll wrap it up. Oh, okay. Yes, hello. My name is Janet Kermanis, and uh, I'm from Newtown Township. Uh, I'm here uh, as a current town representative uh, because I'm sure you know that for, uh, cats eat a lot of food. Uh, over a billion a year. So, if these stray cats are starving, they're, they're uh, attacking the birds as well. So we're really all of one mind here, uh, how, we uh, uh, how we address this issue. And as a member of the board of Bird Town, Pennsylvania, we have uh, now 70 bird towns in Pennsylvania, a lot of them here in the southeast region. Uh, uh, lands down right over here, uh, Media, uh, Springfield. So they're, they're clustered here as well. And this is an issue that I am going to bring in front of the board <coughs> to see whether or not we could do a workshop. We do workshops with our leaders. If you come into a township that is a bird town, you see this symbol uh, on the sign uh, as you come in. So I'm around. very happy to, to uh, enlighten our board to this problem. I had no idea it was this large. I have two stray cats that uh, I've had for years, and uh, uh, I this love one? them to death. Uh, well, not <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, I, and they stay inside, because that's what, right. of course, that's what has to happen. So, you know, obviously, this is a situation that needs a solution, and we haven't come to it yet. <laughs> but together we can. Okay. Was, was your name Janet? Janet Perdain. Janet, can you, did you put a sign? I did put a sign. You, I, I email address. Okay, and can you put about the bird towns? Oh, give me a sign. I'll see if I have a card. Okay, okay, that was fine. <laughs> Thank you. So, I guess we'll wrap it up. And if you didn't sign in, please don't forget. I, does anybody know where the sign? Okay, there, it's back there. there. Oh, so, cool. We'll put that on the table. Um, sign in if you didn't already, and then check volunteer. That just means that you're willing to go to your council members and all that. Are you going to be able to group together? Like, if I go to Upper Derby Township, I'd like people who are in my township who are here to go with me so we could voice, you know, concerns about would you be able to, like, put, put where people are from so we can group? Yeah, that's a good idea. What I'll yeah. do is when I send Despite the first email out, yeah. I'll have Without you <laughs> tell me like what township or borough, yeah. so I can put that and okay. include that, and that would be great. And then that would connect everybody. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever tried the website called Slack? That has like a work group. Oh, well, no. How about no. Slack? What's it called? Slack. S L A C K. Okay, and that connects. And then you can have users that are having communication. Oh, okay, I'll check that out. Thank you. And any ideas that, ever, that anybody has, you know, feel free to email email us or whatever. And we'll, we'll keep like an outline done. Would, would everybody like a copy of this outline? And then you can, yes. that might spur your time to say. Yeah. So that's on that check, that's on the sign in sheet too to check it off if you want an outline. That's what that means. Oh, I'll check it off. I didn't know what it was either. I'll be trying to make sure that it's on there. Yeah. 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 Things that uh, BDSPCA, which comes to the townships they cover, mm -hmm. um, but they and say kind of like you know, what happened to the cats, why it's happening to the cats, um, uh, why you, how we got here.
kind of thing, and why right. just euthanizing all of these cats and saying that will get rid of the problem isn't going to happen. So I have what twenty five would be, but I, I have it. one. Yes, and, I will, and we also have a handout that we give out in Chester, which talks about um, we have feral cats. We hate them on one side, and this is like why you you know okay, so leave it. Not like the cats that are there. They, they're there, so you need to deal with it in a way that's productive, like CNR. Right. But then the people who love the cats, who are who are feeding the cats, which is wonderful. I love anybody who feeds the cats. But if it's not a managed colony, right. which means right. they are not fit, right. then you are not helping the problem by feeding them. It has to be a managed colony for it to be working for everybody. Because if you're feeding, 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 and, and I think we need somewhere where we can call and say, I have six kittens that yeah. have been here, mm -hmm. and I'm feeding them, mm -hmm. and you know, I don't want to get in trouble, but if you can say to the ordinance, look, all of their ears are picked, all of these cats are managed. As soon as, soon as Kim saw a cat in Essington, and we had the guy on video dumping a cat in her colony, had it on video, 19,000 views, not one thing happened to that man, meaning his name, his address, his phone number, his kid's name, his place to place, his car, and nothing happened to that person. Not one thing, we had him on video dropping off the cat, dumping it in Essington, and then going back two days later to see where it was. It's like, but we couldn't even get his hand clapped. We have traps in houses where 22 cats were left behind. Tracy and I, 22 cats in Clifton Heights in a row house. And this lady had all of this documentation. You looked her up on the court record. She has a history of doing this. And yet she had 22 oh cats goodness. in the basement. In a, in a basement. Yeah. In the house. And that's what we need to stop and the change. Thankfully, they had somebody who was willing to not just open up the door and let those 22 unpicked cats out into the community because that's no. what was going to happen. Uh -huh. And a friend of hers said, if you do that, I swear to God, I'll never talk to you again. <laughs> and so Good. they got yes. a hold of us and we did it. Then the homeowner complained that they didn't want to spend the thousand dollars. And I said, what impact would that have had on Clinton Heights? Right. Right. We did Drexel Hill have been in two cats in one twin house. Eighty kittens. We went there to for two rounds of kittens. We came out with eighty two cats out of a twin in Drexel Hill. If those cats had gone outside, none of them were fixed. Imagine that impact. We did another one. Right. If you have managed colony, managed colony, you will yeah. see all the cats. <laughs> Two things. Thank you for addressing this issue. Um, a very good friend of mine, which is a suggestion I'll make to you about Upper Darby, going in there to speak to council. You get three minutes, right? right. Mm -hmm. So go in prepared by reaching out to a council member. And the council member I would strongly urge you to speak to is Laura Wentz. So, because she, <laughs> she actually told me she was gonna to try to be here tonight, but I think she had to work. The only, this is a super complex problem. Mm -hmm. you, you, ordinances are good, but they're only as good as their ability to be enforced, mm -hmm. right? Legislation, is it is I think even gets more complicated because you guys are doing something out of the kindness of your hearts to to help solve a problem and by legislating things that might exacerbate a problem because then you need certifications and things like that so we need to engage but we need to engage in a way that's cooperative and talk through it 
So going into the townships is great. Having that sample ordinance in your hand is, is key because I think it gives you talking points about what works. But engaging someone on council before you go in so you know the lay of the land and, and can get some leg work already done before you get your three minutes. So I yes. want to just interject that like I've been in sales for a very long time and every sales team has a plan. It's about features and benefits. It doesn't matter if you're selling tires or lampshades. It's the same thing. You know, this is the best lampshade. You won't believe it. It's so nice you'll fall asleep on it every night. If you go to a politician and you say, you know, it's one thing to say to them, um, there's a problem. I mean, just put it on a personal level. They hear about problems all day long, right? And we even got berated at the last meeting a little bit because you know, we brought up negative things at the, the council meeting that had to be addressed. But and I can understand one of the council members' response because she's saying, we hear this all the time. We're always, you know, let's like tone it down a bit. Well. I guess what I'm saying is, if we present a problem, present a solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what they want to hear. We're, we we have the ability with with this amount of knowledge knowledge that you guys have and experience in this, that if we come up with some types of solutions, like we were saying, sometimes we form committees right away, and then people are going to gravitate towards certain things. Like some people are really good at fundraising. And they, they know how to do it. And that would be a very valuable person or a very valuable community. But we also need people to be able to go like to these, you know, council meetings and so forth. Or council maybe, you know, like in media they said, Well, you can make an appointment to come see me, you know. Now they said I think they said they had open doors. So, so you could just go and visit them. If we were to approach them and influence them and say, Look, you have a problem in your community whether you want to admit it or not. You show them the facts and figures, you know. Um, I don't know, 230 cats or whatever it was in one house. Like that's that's alarming. But you you have a solution for that. You have an organization where you know there's going to be funding. You know the uh, the pet supply people are going to come in and offer food. And they have if they have a central point to do that, and we do it well, then we're setting a standard. Maybe other communities like we said said can copy that very thing. But getting back to my original point. You, you catch a lot of views with time. Yeah. So you go in with solution. If we're smart enough, we figure out the solution, we have the answer for them before we present the problem. And it's a permanent solution that we want to have. I know there's an immediate need and all that too, and you know, but, but permanent solution is the long term goal. So, yeah. Terrific. Can we thank Judge Lee Grimes, who's here? Yeah. He was here the whole night and listened attentively to everything. So now I, I hope he gets a better picture of why we feed cats and he won't put us in jail, hopefully. <laughs> well, let's just put it this way. If you can go to jail for feeding cats, I probably would be in jail already. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good, okay. And, uh, for Darby and Help Trap before too, we've, we've had fun. I've had fun with my friend Lori there. We've, we've trapped before and it's been a good experience, so. Thank you for putting it together very mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. You got us together. I greatly appreciate it. This is uh, something that is great to see happen as a community coming together for a great cause. Yeah. I think it's the start of something really, really yeah. wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.